Welcome! This is what this video is about. These are the results of days and hours of practice that I was putting into trying to figure out how to do the um, ragdoll physics that Blender doesn't immediately let you do, but I thought there must be a way to put together blocks and use those blocks to inform a mesh so that it has some sort of floppiness or, you know, ragdoll physics about it. And uh, the best I could do <laughs> were fish, and this was actually one of the first better successes at having fish flop. They look very interesting, and they do kind of flop around. It's kind of exciting. This is a scratch copy of what I am going to try to go through very fast today, and the camera is 52 seconds in a bit of a triangle from this top corner down into a right corner, then a left corner, and then back into this top corner, and now a next video shows an example of not using Shift D, but Alt D to make duplicates that are called instances. Instanced duplicates are copies that retain some of the characteristics of the original. When I made one original fish and then used Alt D to instance other copies, I was hoping to change the attributes of the original and have them propagate to all the copies. That did not happen. And these fish seem to live in the fifth dimension. Look at this crazy flickering. I don't know how many fish there were, but it didn't matter. I was just really amazed at some of the mistakes this thing was making. And this took me, that was a well-earned couple hours worth of uh, knowledge. Now I created Shift D duplicates, and this is 12 iterations where the default is 10 iterations per, I don't know, per frame or per uh, unit or um, per little collision. And uh, I changed a couple of other things about this, and those 12 iterations up from 10 were a real change. And it didn't affect the render time, but it sure did make a big improvement in the fish. Look at that guy flopping over the side. It's not perfect. And in a lot of cases, there's a piece of geometry in these fish, four pieces in fact, that do the colliding. And those pieces of geometry deform a lattice. And that lattice deforms a fish shape. So we are two steps removed from what is actually doing the colliding. And I think here we have twice the number of fish, a slightly smaller hole so that there will still be some fish in the kitty up top when this 52 seconds is over. But you can see that some of these fish hover above the things that they impact. And so those collisions are happening at a default of 0.04 meters in blender, uh, in blender speak. And so the collision item has 0.04, these fish have 0.04, and the fish are made of four collision objects just by chance. Uh, uh, they could be three, could be two, it doesn't matter. But that's why they kind of seem to float. So in this video, I'm going to take all that I've learned from these flopping, falling fish, and you and I are going to make fish that have a better chance of looking like they really collide, like these guys are rubbing on very well. And this is back to the first video. This sounds perhaps like something of a challenge. It was a challenge I wanted to take on, and we won't be creating the shower scene with the uh, tapered gear, but we will be making some fish that um, bounce across some baffles. If that sounds like something that you would be interested in doing, this might be the video for you. It's kind of a biggie, but I'll go through it quick and easy as I can. Get ready. Hello, hi, hola, handle and greeting, Blender 2.80, coming at you, file defaults, I hope I don't regret this, loading factory settings, making sure my window is toggled full screen, and also I'm going to go to preferences and make sure my add-ons include the node wrangler, and also because you might want a gear, I believe that was in the extra objects for mesh. Uh, by default, that gear doesn't show up, and I don't plan on using the gear right now. My navigation will be auto depth and zoom to mouse position. One more add on um, plane. Import plane 
uh, images as plain Zzz, or something. Uh, default cube, we're just going to get rid of it, even though we will be using a cube just a little bit later. We need a fish. If ever there was a fish that looked like a fish, the red snapper was certainly it. I'm going to take a look at this image in a new window. Gosh, it's massive, massive, massive fish, and it's been scaled. That's kind of creepy looking. And I'm going to save the image as red snapper. When you press Shift A and um, find from that menu image, Images Planes is now there, and you go ahead and find what it was that you just downloaded. Z and 2 will give you a look at it. Z and 8 will also give you a look at it. We are in, if you were curious, EV. That fish is going to be helpful. I want him turned around just because I sort of like the head on the left. So RZ180. My light is over here. Now I'm in rendered view. The light makes a difference. Do you remember what I said about how this is going to happen? It gets really awkward because we are two levels away from actually controlling our mesh. So first what we're going to do is press so that we can look at an orthographic view of our nasty here. Our nasty is going to have three or four pieces of geometry that will sort of resemble his shape. Let's get started. I will make a cube and I will make sure that cube in edit mode is scaled down and I will go over into the object tabs and I'll take care of my viewport visibility and make sure it's just wire. This way uh, I can see through it because even with x-ray I can't see behind the fish that I'm working on. So there is sort of an interesting thing that I want to get started here and I want to click a face that's um, you know on the side left or right from my orthographic view and shift s put my cursor to that selected face. Tab back into object mode from edit mode and then click object set origin to 3D cursor. Go back into orthographic mode, shift S, put the cursor back to the world origin, tab into uh, edit mode here to continue editing. But basically before I edit, I'm going to G to grab it and make this the first section of its back. There will be two sections in its back and one section for its head. This is well inside the bounds, but I don't want to alter it just yet. Before I make Shift D duplicates, I want to set this guy up for success. He's a rigid body. He's active. He's about one kilogram. He's dynamic. But I want the shape to be on mesh. And I want the surface response to be 0.25. Five. Anywhere between 0.2 and 0.3 is what I've found success with. Closer to 0.2 has been better for me, and I promise I've done this a couple of times. My margin, so I'm just going to leave it like that for now, but since this is a rigid body, when I press Shift D R180, it will rotate around our median point that we changed to that side. And we would like for that pivot point to basically be where that neck bone is going to be. So now, this new uh, cube, I will press F2 and call it uh, head bone. It's not really going to be a bone, but I just need to identify what it is. I can press F2 on this original cube and name it, um, oh gosh, top back. You know what? I'm going to call it back top so my backs are essentially together. Shift D, what backs you ask, and why to constrain that duplicate, this back. See, here's the next one right there. That one is now low, oops, <laughs> back low, back low, shift D Y, back low, that's got to be a word somewhere, and obviously our tail, F2, um, tailbone, tail bone. ouch, don't hit that, this carried with it all of the information, and now what I'm going to do is press uh, this head bone here, and I also want to get the head bone inside the border of this ghastly fish picture. I could enter edit mode and press 1 and select it and try to move, but now I can't select through my object. I'm going to press this x-ray button so that when I click and drag, I can G and it selects through that object. Thanks to the benefit of being able to grab 
through. It's as though I'm using X-ray vision. Uh, wonder. I wonder if that was a good explanation. So S, Z, and G, I'm going to kind of split the difference between these two parts, S, Z, and then what I'll do is I will G move this so that that pivot point sort of looks like the connection of that bone, even though you and I both know that's a really horrible, uh, horribly stiff tailbone that we're using, but it's okay. It's okay. That's just going to be for collision purposes. S, Z. Now, I've only been taking care of the Z, and I'm pretty much almost kind of happy with that. And one thing about Blender 2.80 is I can shift, select additional bones here, and then when I go into edit mode, I can edit all of them together. And so I'm just, pardon me, fishing around for things to improve. There we go. This is going to be, he says streamlined, <laughs> this is going to be our fish, our, oh, here we go. Let me get these textured. This is the part that goes bump, right there. Head, spine one, spine two, and tail. And those things all have to be hinged together super easy. Big important thing right now, take everything you see here and move it to a new layer called physics. M, N like Nancy, O2, I just do that uh, so that I can remember a um, keyboard shortcut when I need to, and it's all on physics. Physics can be viewed and hidden with the number two. The number one is reserved for a collection, which is the default. And so now I am going to put these guys back into wire we know they are physics. They are active physics. What you may also know, and I'm going to hide the fish. I don't need him anymore. What you may not know is that shift S cursor to selected shift A empty plane axis is required to connect those two physics pieces. Now, this is why the fish is successful. This is one of the reasons why you're listening. It's a rigid body constraint. It's not fixed. It's hinged along the Z axis. No matter where this fish flops, the birth of this collision object is stationary to this empty. As long as we don't tinker with this empty, the hinge will be like a door running up and down where a door is hinged to the wall. Unfortunately, they don't have a hinge on the X or Y, so we just have to rely on this. Now, I had found um, 20 degrees, I think. So minus 20, tab 20, enter. And I am going to click on this one where its median point is right here. Shift S, uh, cursor to selected, Shift A, empty. Now this one, also a rigid body constraint, also a hinge. Gosh, I just feel like I'm going to forget something. The limits will be the Z angle. I leave it at 45. And of course I forget something. It's asking for the objects to connect. We named everything smartly, but if you didn't name it smartly, you could just use the eyedropper and click on the objects that are going to be connected. But because we named it smartly, I know that I can find back low and then back top. And then I can click on the tail, and because its pivot point is where we want the hinge to take place, I can shift S, cursor to selected, shift A, and an empty object is placed at the cursor. Shift S, you can now return it with one to world origin. We need to handle this guy that we just made. He is that empty, and he is not fixed. He is a hinge. I don't know why he's a he, but he goes from minus 45 to minus 90, tab 90, enter. The first is that low back, or back low, or whatever. I feel like I keep messing up that name. 
We don't want to override iterations. Where iterations are hiding is inside the World Fair, which is what this reminds me of. I think it was a 1939 World Fair with a pyramid and a sphere. Um, I might look that up. There. See? Kind of showing my age. The sphere, just kidding. The sphere and this uh, obelisk. Anyway, you click on the World's Fair here, and you can take care of expanding the rigid body world flyout and change that default from 10 to 12. Like I said, I didn't notice a major difference in rendering times. Here's what the 60 means, 60 steps per second. We're operating at 24 frames per second. So how many steps does each frame get? 2.5 steps per frame. If you have objects that will be colliding very fast, you will want to consider raising that. I have made these smaller for the most part, like 0.2 is okay with me. This does not affect anything in the collision, by the way, but it's good that you keep track of scale just in case scale has anything to do with the collisions. Now good news, it falls down. When I press the space bar and start playing, it shows you the relationship lines and you can click object types visibility and turn off the empty visibility and you won't have to keep looking at that over and over and over especially if you have a hundred fish you see what I'm saying shift left arrow it's back to where it belongs now can we do something let's do one more thing here I haven't moved it from the center shift a uh, mesh circle there select everything and now control P and you'll notice that uh, the circle is yellow um, that's just a neat Blender 2.8 thing, isn't it? So now it's parented and I can just sort of make this appear wherever I need it to appear. Well, where do I want it to appear? I want to catch the fish, perhaps in like a barrel or something, but before the fish get to the barrel, I want them to hit baffles on the way down. I will create a very basic scene. Alt D with that light. And Shift Z allows me on the X Y axis to create one of those instanced copies. So here's that new light that's an instance of the old light. When I change 1,000 watts to 900, the old light also shows 900. I'm gonna warm it up just a little bit because why not, really? So this is a uh, platform here, which I guess I'll just call platform. And it receives fish, and I've just enjoyed a square recessed and then a centerpiece sticking out. Uh, as far as modifiers go, it only has this solidify modifier on it. We want to go into the physics tab, which looks like a moon going around the earth, and I will put rigid body, and it's not active, it's passive, and it's not animated, and it's not convex hull, but it is mesh, because it needs to have this recessed area, this moat for fish. And we can change it anytime you want and add and subtract things from here. This has just been sort of a lucky catch, so to speak. Ah, I'm going to create a new layer and hide it there under like infrastructure or something. So M to move, N for new, and then I'll obey 0, 03 uh, just as good practice. And I said infrastructure. How do you spell that? Infrastruct. Sure, that sounds very reasonable. And now there it is. And our um, physics stuff is right here, but it's not visible. If I make it visible and select mm, the circle, I can GZ, and there's our old familiar friend right there, and he's hiding right above the, uh, the whatchamacallit there that I created. So guess what should happen? Uh, that's right, so let's do it. Let me hide the visibility of the empties. Oh, the tail goes. Okay. Okay. That was fast <laughs> because it's not going very far and it's not very slippery. This has settings, friction of 0.2 and a bounciness of 0 0.1. 0 0.11 apparently will make it bounce and uh, off it goes. So it does hit all three at least. And this is the point where you can sort of double check how things are happening. And that tail is very well animated. And it looks very segmented because these individual bones that we made aren't the things that flex. As 
a matter of fact, I think I might have to just let you work with the numbers on your own. Spacebar, shift, left arrow, because I'm probably going to run out of time. Alt H is going to bring back the picture of the fish, which I'm going to GZ and put up behind that infrastructure bit, his uh, collision parts. GZ, just to make sure that I kind of roughly get it in the right spot. I'm going to do something with a cube that's roughly what we did before, but it's going to be all one piece. And that all one piece is going to be important because it will be the part we see. So that's where I'm headed right now. Oh my gosh. So what do we do with this crazy ass fish here? What do we do with this ugly fish, which I, I'm kind of embarrassed to say is the way it's going. Um, wow. That could be ugh, gross applied that's so ugly uh what do we do with this fish we need to give it a lattice we still have our 3d cursor up there it is the lattice that will perform most of the work i made a huge mistake when i made one of the movies where the fish enter the fifth dimension um there was a movie i didn't print where i went into edit mode and changed the lattice Change the lattice in object mode, not edit mode, okay? So if you're a control tab person, that's four. Got it? Um, and that object mode is where you do things like SY to get it basically holding the fish as though it's yet another cage around the fish. So that is... S with shift Y so that it scales on the Z and the X and then G Z to move it down and X Y Z also have compadres they are U V W so if you get the idea that X Y Z is you know straight on left and right and up and down then you'll understand that this is straight on per our view right now left and right and up and down so if I add segments to the up and down, it bisects across the up and down axis. It's, um, it's actually very true. It takes a little getting used to, but thankfully it's also very forgiving. What I want you to do is not match item for item in the cuts, because what we need is not four boxes, but what we need are four connections. So I'm calling that one connection, two connection, three connection, four. Okay? Those connections equal four. Our collision boxes also equal four. Gotcha? Select one of your collision boxes. You know what? Hide the fish. I swear. Just hide the fish. Select one of the collision boxes and then shift select the lattice. To get a little extra squeeze inside that lattice, it would be okay to add those. And what they do is they bisect it. I haven't, you know, seen anything bad happen. Tab into object mode, edit mode, tab into edit mode, and now click and drag to select the vertices of that lattice that represent the first connection. Control H, hook to the selected object which in this case, if you check in the modifier panel, is the head bone. Totally predictable. Tab back into object mode, select the next bone. Shift select the lattice, tab into edit mode. Click and drag the next connection, control H. Hook to selected object. Control H, hook to selected bone, tab into object mode, select Shift select, tab into edit mode, click and drag, control H, hook the selected object. You see why you wouldn't want to make this nine pieces long. We haven't added physics to the lattice because the lattice is going to travel with the objects that are in charge of the collision. And so when we collide with something, it will deform the lattice. The lattice in turn Shift left arrow, decimal, Alt H, is now going to be told to deform the fish. 
So I select the fish and I add a modifier. The modifier is somewhere around here. There it is, lattice. <laughs> you have to select an object. Well, it knows what a lattice is. We only have one. It's going to be the whole fish, so I'm not going to do vertex groups. And now the exact same thing. Spacebar. I did not do a good job keeping my collision parts inside the mesh of the fish. And I told you we were going to keep it inside the fish. I should have really, really, really kept it inside the fish. And now it's a little bit late to be playing this game. Nuts. If I want to make a copy of this thing, I have to select all of it. Shift D to make your duplicate. Shift D, Shift D, Shift D. We've basically created a situation where we want to keep our original and then every time we want to change or tweak some of the settings in the rigid body world, which show up when you have just one item selected, uh, like say the weight, it would be floppier and different if it were different uh, measures of kilograms there. Um, we have to take all of those copies, get rid of them, change the original, and then go back. Uh, if there's another way to do it, I haven't found it. So rendering is kind of amusing. First, let's Alt-A to deselect everything. We are not looking at empties. If we did look at empties, it would look like this. I know what happened. I know what happened. Okay. I am not going to stop this recording. I know exactly what happened. Guess what? We didn't copy. And I'm including you in this. That's a very pretty mistake. <laughs> I seem to have not copied empties. I must have hidden them from view or whatever. I didn't mean for that to be a lesson, but there it was. So now shift D. Yeah, shift D. Yeah, shift D. And definitely keep that first one isolated so that you can do exactly what I just did and go back and make sure that you can grab all the others because this is a lot of hardware. This is a lot of stuff that goes along, whether you're doing a um, and a wind sock, or a sock, or a fish, or a snake, or a limb, or an octopus tentacle, you know? So what do we not want to see? Well, we don't want to see all the physics parts. And we don't need to see the lattice. And we don't need to see the empties. We basically just want to get left with the mesh. And that's exactly what we've done here. So Alt-A. All of those have all of their parts. <laughs> When I press the space bar, will it flop? That's flopping. That's flopping great. Oh, poor fish. Look at that. And he's on his back. This is because I didn't make the collision parts small enough. All right. Let's go back to the World Fair and take care of speed. 0.5. Why not? They're slippery, maybe they're covered in ice. Oh, we did lose a fish. And I can... Plop, 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 plop. They just pound right on top of each other. I think it's fascinating. <laughs> I hope that if you also explore with this stuff, that you have a good time doing whatever it is that you're going to do. Go look at this fish. You ready? Let's render it right now. F12. Guess what? He's got blocks coming out of him. Because those blocks are renderable, the collision blocks, unless you hide it? No, because it still shows up if it's hidden. Those collision blocks show up unless you've isolated them to their own layer and then you can exclude from the view layer and they won't render. You can also, I can't manage to remember that, but you want to do something harder, you can also go into, if I can select it again, that object's object context and handle its visibility. 
Show in renders, deactivate. And now that collision object no longer shows, but the other ones do because they were Shift D duplicates. Do not make them Alt D duplicates. So you'd have to do that for each of them, which is why I recommend, beg your pardon, I did the wrong button there. I recommend this, creating a layer for all those physics parts. But when it's time to clean things up and do things all over again, you kind of want to make sure that uh, you don't get lost. I've completely lost my fish. Where's my fish? All right, I have one lattice. Let's go find it. There it is. Now, sideways. Let's see what we catch. There we go. Some foley for you. Goodbye, fish. Where the heck? <laughs> it's a terrible fish noise. I'm going to stop now while I still have a few friends. And that's it. Look at those fish flop. Congratulations, you made flopping fish. <laughs> and they hide inside the gutter I created. So that is what it looks like when you have ragdoll physics on the cheap. Man, look at all those swishing tails. Aren't they beautiful? All right. I hope that you've gotten something out of this video. I'm going to be experimenting all the time, maybe one to three videos a week, with things I'm not familiar with. To me, that has a great deal of value. So go out there. Don't be afraid. It's a big ocean. There's plenty of fish. See what you catch. Cast your line. Bait your hooks. Uh, that's it. I'm going to reel it in. I appreciate everything that you guys do. Subscribing and commenting. It's a lot of fun for me. It's no good if it's not fun. So help me keep it fun and give me some ideas. I'll catch you later. <sighs> oh, man. Thanks for watching.